The Moberly Jourdan incident. The Moberly Jourdan incident, or the ghosts of Petit Trianon or Versailles, was an event that occurred on August 10, 1901, in the gardens of the Petit Trianon, involving two female academics, Charlotte Ann Moberly, 1846 to 1937, and Eleanor Jourdan, 1863 to 1924. The women were both from educated backgrounds. Moberly's father was a teacher and a bishop, and Jourdan's father was a vicar. During a trip to Versailles, they visited the Petit Trianon, a small chateau in the grounds of the Palace of Versailles, where they allegedly experienced a time slip and saw Marie Antoinette as well as other people of the same period. After researching the history of the palace and comparing notes of their experience, they published their work pseudonymously in a book entitled An Adventure, under the names of Elizabeth Morrison and Francis Lamont, in 1911. Their story caused a sensation and was subject to much ridicule. Background Moberly, born in 1846, was the tenth of fifteen children. She came from a professional background. Her father, George Moberly, was the headmaster of Winchester College and later Bishop of Salisbury. In 1886, Moberly became the first principal of a hall of residence for young women, Street Hughes College in Oxford. It became apparent that Moberly needed someone to help run the college, and Jourdan was asked to become Moberly's assistant. She was the eldest of ten children, and her father, the Reverend Francis Jourdan, was the vicar of Ashbourne in Derbyshire. She was the sister of art historian Margaret Jourdan and mathematician Philip Jourdan. She went to school in Manchester, unlike most girls of the time who were educated at home. Jourdan was also the author of several textbooks, ran a school of her own, and, after the incident, became the vice principal of Street Hughes College. Before Jourdan was appointed, it was decided that the two women should get to know one another better. Jourdan owned an apartment in Paris where she tutored English children, and so Moberly went to stay with her. The incident. As part of several trips, they decided to visit the Palace of Versailles, as they were both unfamiliar with it. On August 10, 1901, they traveled by train to Versailles. They did not think much of the palace after touring it, so they decided to walk through the gardens to the Petit Trianon. On the way, they reached the Grand Trianon and found it was closed to the public. They traveled with a Baedeker guidebook, but the two women soon became lost after missing the turn for the main avenue, Allée des Du Trianons. They passed this road and entered a lane, where, unknown to them, they passed their destination. Moberly noticed a woman shaking a white cloth out of a window, and Jourdan noticed an old deserted farmhouse, outside of which was an old plow. At this point, they claimed that a feeling of oppression and dreariness came over them. They then saw some men who looked like palace gardeners, who told them to go straight on. Moberly later described the men as very dignified officials, dressed in long grayish-green coats with small three-cornered hats. Jourdan noticed a cottage with a woman and a girl in the doorway. The woman was holding out a jug to the girl. Jourdan described it as a tableau vivant, a living picture, much like Madame Tussaud's waxworks. Moberly did not observe the cottage but felt the atmosphere change. She wrote, everything suddenly looked unnatural, therefore unpleasant. Even the tree seemed to become flat and lifeless as would worked in a tapestry. There were no effects of light and shade and no wind stirred the trees. The Comte de Baudreuil was later suggested as a candidate for the man with the marked face allegedly seen by Moberly and Jourdan. They reached the edge of a wood, close to the Temple de la Morte, and came across a man seated beside a garden kiosk, wearing a cloak and large shady hat. According to Moberly, his appearance was most repulsive and his expression odious. His complexion was dark and rough. Jourdan noted the man slowly turned his face, which was marked by smallpox. His complexion was very dark. The expression was evil and yet unseeing, and though I did not feel that he was looking particularly at us, I felt a repugnance to going past him. A man later described as tall, with large dark eyes and crisp curling black hair under a large sombrero hat came up to them, and showed them the way to the petty tree and on. Portrait of Marie Antoinette by Vert Muller The figure that Moberly saw near the Petit Trianon was claimed to bear a resemblance to the Queen as depicted in this painting. After crossing a bridge, they reached the gardens in front of the palace, and Moberly noticed a lady sketching on the grass who was looking at them. She later described what she saw in great detail. The lady was wearing a light summer dress, on her head was a shady white hat, and she had lots of fair hair. Moberly thought she was a tourist at first, but the dress appeared to be old-fashioned. I came to believe that the lady was Marie Antoinette. Jourdan, on the other hand, did not notice the lady. After this, they were directed back to the entrance and joined a party of other visitors. After touring the house, they had tea at the Hotel des Reservoirs before returning to Jourdan's apartment. Aftermath 
After leaving Versailles, neither Jourdan nor Moberly mentioned the incident to one another until a week later. Moberly wrote a letter about the trip to her sister, and when she got home in the afternoon of the Versailles incident, she asked Jourdan if she thought the Petit Trianon was haunted. Jourdan told her that she thought it was three months later, in Oxford, they compared their notes and decided to write separate accounts of what happened and research the history of the Trianon. In doing so, they found that on August 10, 1792, the Tuileries Palace in Paris was besieged, the King's Swiss Guards were massacred, and the monarchy itself was abolished six weeks later. They visited the Trianon Gardens again on several occasions but were unable to trace the path they took. Various landmarks, such as the kiosk and the bridge, were missing, and the grounds were full of people. Trying to come up with an explanation, they wondered if they had stumbled across a private party or an event booked that day. However, they found that nothing had been booked that afternoon. During their research, they thought they recognized the man by the kiosk as the Comte de Vaudreuil, a friend of Marie Antoinette, who herself had been thought to have been seen by Moberly. Convinced that the grounds were haunted, they decided to publish their findings in a book, An Adventure, 1911, under the pseudonyms of Elizabeth Morrison and Francis Lamont. The book, containing the claim that Marie Antoinette had been encountered in 1901, caused a sensation. However, many critics did not take it seriously on the grounds of the implausibilities and inconsistencies that it was thought to contain. A review of the book in the Proceedings of the Society for Psychical Research suggested that the women had misinterpreted normal events that they had experienced. In 1, in 1903, an old map of the Trianon Gardens was found and showed a bridge that the two women had claimed to have crossed that had not been on any other map. The identity of the authors of an adventure was not made public until 1931. Both women are reported to have had many paranormal experiences before and after their adventure. In one of them, Moberly claimed to have seen in the Louvre in 1914 an apparition of the Roman Emperor Constantine, a man of unusual height wearing a gold crown and a toga, he was not observed by anybody else. During the First World War, Jourdan, the dominant personality of the pair and who had succeeded as principal of Street Hughes, became convinced that a German spy was hiding in the college. After developing increasingly autocratic behavior, she died suddenly in 1924 in the middle of an academic scandal over her leadership of the college, her conduct having provoked mass resignations of academic staff. Moberly died in 1937. The story of the adventure was made into a TV movie, Miss Morrison's Ghosts, in 1981. The incident is said to have exerted an influence on J.R.R. Tolkien's views and work. Some explanations. In addition to the explanation by the women that they had been caught up in what is now called a time slip and had observed ghosts from the past, a non-supernatural explanation of the events was proposed by Philippe Julian in his 1965 biography of the aristocratic and decadent French poet Robert de Montesquieu. At the time of Moberly and Jourdan's excursion to Versailles, Montesquieu lived nearby and reportedly gave parties in the grounds where his friends dress in period costume and performed tableaus vivant as part of the party entertainment. Moberly and Jourdan may have inadvertently stumbled into a rehearsal for one of these performances. The Marie Antoinette figure could have been a society lady or a crossdresser, like the pockmarked man Montesquieu himself. It was suggested that a gathering of the French decadent avant-garde of the time could have made a sinister impression on the two middle-class Edwardian spinsters, who would have been little used to such company. In a review of the history of the Moberly Jourdan adventure and the extensive public reaction to it, Terry Castle noted with skepticism the claim that a shared delusion may have arisen out of a lesbian folia due between the two women. Castle concludes that, when all proposed explanations have been considered, a core of mystery remains as much in relation to the psychological dynamics of the pair as to any aspects of the paranormal associated with their story.